Hello walkers and welcome back to Arizona. We are actually in a different spot today. We're in a national monument called Chiricahua and we're going to walk part of the Echo Canyon Loop Trail. The whole loop trail, let me go through and tell you some of what we're going to do here. Um, this is uh, this national monument, Chiricahua National Monument, is known for these amazing finger-like rock structures. And I'll explain a little bit about that in a little bit. Um, and it's also been mentioned recently in the news as a potential new national park. Um, it is located, we're located down in southeast Arizona. We're at about 67, 6,800 feet of elevation. I didn't bother looking that up in meters, I apologize. Um, and this particular loop goes about 3.9 miles. And as I said, we're gonna do a little bit of it, um, maybe a mile and a half, two miles. Um, we'll see, we'll see how things go. Um, I already walked it once with my son and we had a great time this morning. He's gonna go off and hike another trail. And, um, and then I'll talk a little bit about this. I'm gonna hike down a ways as I film, and then I'll just hike back up to save you guys the sound of me huffing and puffing. <clears throat> it is uh, 48 degrees or so Fahrenheit, eight degrees Celsius, about noon um, in mid-January. You can see we've got some snow and ice here. Luckily, not too much. Uh, and this, you points out the Maasai Trail uh, and Ed Riggs Trail. So Ed Riggs is what you'll take coming back if you were to do the whole loop. Um, Chiricahua is, I believe, an Apache word. Uh, this was a, I think at one point it was a, an Apache reservation before it was taken away um, during the wars with the Apache in the 1860s, 1870s, and 1880s, um, which is a great podcast called Stuff You Should Know. Shout out to those guys, Chuck and Josh. Chuck and Josh. Um, and we were listening to a bit about that on the way up here. And really interesting stuff. Obviously, there's a lot of um, <laughs> violence on both sides there and just loss of life, suffering, etc., uh, on both sides. And, uh, but one of the things we learned was that, uh, and this actually, we actually learned this from the visitor center that Chiricahua is a word that means wild turkey. I didn't even introduce myself. I'm gonna spin this around real quick. My name is Henry. I will be your proxy walker today, your virtual travel guide, your co-discoverer uh, on this walk along Echo Canyon Loop. And I hope you'll enjoy it. I'm gonna spin you around again. And, uh, whoop, there we go. Um, I am huffing and puffing a little bit because I said we're up pretty high. We got a little breeze here. Um, there's also Fort Bowie off to the north, which is a historic fort. We hiked out there last night. Very interesting. Beautiful, beautiful time of day. Um, I mentioned, I promised, <laughs> or I said, that I would uh, tell you a little bit about this formation. And luckily, my son pays attention at the visitor centers. Um, and apparently, 15 to 25 million years ago, somewhere in there. There were a bunch of volcanic eruptions over millions of years. Laid down a lot of ash and deposit, deposited a lot of debris. And that compressed to become something called rhyolite. It was pushed up and then over the millennia and the rain and water and freeze-thaw cycle um, created this, created erosional patterns that left these big fingers, and we're gonna get down into them in just a little bit here. Um, it's not just these distant views. 
I want to thank our Patreon supporters for your support and all the folks who have donated one-time donations through PayPal or Coffee, K-O.fi. Links in the description, YouTube description there. Also, this will also go eventually on the website where I have all the walks uh, organized by walk time and by location so you can find specific walks much easier, much more easily. And then I'll probably, probably stop talking quite as much here in a minute. I try to do that on these nature walks. People are having some fun out here. <laughs> Look at these old pine trees. And you can see some of the fingers out there. And we'll go get into them now, I think. This is sort of an, a range of mountains. I think they're called the Chiricahuas. And then there's a range to the north as well. But to either side, it's just this very dry, flat land. Um, and then there'll be another mountain range and you can, you'll get a glimpse or we'll get a glimpse. I don't know if you will. Um, through a, between a couple mountains and you'll look out and see just this expansive flat. Off to the west is a playa, which is a an area that I think collects, a flat area that collects water uh, over time. We saw a bunch of sandhill cranes uh, when we left the hotel in Wilcox, Arizona earlier. And apparently there's a big birding festival this weekend. Here you can get a better look of what we're going to go down into. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, thank you. One of the things I was telling my son on the way down here is this is kind of a tricky trail because uh, I'm constantly trying to look up and see all these different cool views and then I stumble on something. It's not really a tricky trail, it's actually quite nice. Despite the ice here, Sniffles. I'll try not to do that. There is a rock. So there's another big loop and a heart of rocks loop. It's about eight miles. And I think it would totally be doable if you're of reasonable fitness. Um, we chose this one because it's a little shorter. And we want to do a couple other things. And that gets you deep into them. But there's a big hanging rock apparently kind of like that one but much bigger with I think a narrower base whoops we'll stumble there it's all fine and dandy 
we're going to get up to here in a section called the Echo, Echo Canyon Grottoes, which are pretty cool as well. That sun is hot. I have to imagine this one, this rock has a name as well. I think it kind of looks like that character Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy, if you've seen that. Kind of neat to see the snow on the opposite side. That was intentional. You definitely want to have nice sh the appropriate footwear for this trail. Doesn't have to be excessive, but something with some good traction. I saw a young guy, young kid out here wearing high top basketball shoes. And I think he might, well, he's a kid, he'll be fine, but I wouldn't want to wear those flatter bottoms. I hope I'm not swinging you around too much. I'm trying to do it slowly um, so that I'm not throwing people off, or if I do, I'll try to give you a warning, but I often forget. I know it can be disconcerting when you're watching it. Here are the grottoes we're entering. They're not really a true grotto. They're these cool pathways though. It sounds like some other folks are in there. Oh. In fact, you can kind of see up in here. You can maybe hear some people up in there. Green, beautiful green lichen on the side. I think that's lichen. And look at the texture of these rocks. You know, it's almost like vertical. Oh, look at that suspended rock in there. Vertical uh, layers instead of horizontal. We were wondering why, what, what forms, what causes these forms to occur rather than just any other, you know. All right, we'll go up here a little bit. Spin you to the right. This is fascinating to me. Well, we're taking our are having some family time, I'll leave them to it. 
make our way back down. Pretty cool up there though. Seeing these folks can give you a perspective, a sense of scale. It's pretty cool up there. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the sniffles. That was the first feedback I ever got. Oh, look at this green. Green stuff was to take a tissue with me. Um, and that was well, well said. from whence we came. See, the other side of the valley has them too. It's like a whole layer of them, maybe you have multiple layers. Hi there. I think we start uh, dog-legging, zigzagging our way back down, not back down, but down, which gives us plenty of other more views. Um, I like to thank people also for commenting. I love getting your comments. Um, oftentimes we'll get a little bit of a correction, which is nice to get the accurate information out there. Um, recommendations for things I may have missed or other things to do in the area. And I'll, I especially like people's personal remembrances and stories uh, from the places that I go. And also any kind of feedback or um, how you found the channel, how you're using the channel, that stuff is always very interesting to me and helpful. And I, I really love responding to the comments. 
So thank you. Uh, I guess we're not quite at the zigzags, but we'll go down here and we'll get into some little slots that are carved, I think by water or natural forces, but it could have been by the uh, CCC back in the day. There's one spot that looks like it was carved, sorry, about leaving you halfway up that rock. One of the challenges of filming and exploring at the same time is uh, my eyes move much more quickly than your attention, the viewer's attention, I find. So when I'm going back and watch these, I often cringe a little bit that I didn't hold the shot a little bit longer or reveal a little bit more the sort of my mind wants to see more and beyond what I actually filmed, but I do my best. We're gonna the trails right down there. So we'll cut through this little bit over there. Uh, I'll tell you, the temperature may be 48, but in the sun and out of the wind, it's very nice. Oops. A little spy over the lip there. Got some kids having a fun down here. Hopefully, hopefully they're having fun. Sounds like fun, yeah. I love when kids are out here, families are out here having fun and getting their kids out in nature. I just think that's great. Spectacular. Such a bizarre um, geologic features, I guess. Hi there. Hi. I'm just going to peek over here. Actually, go peek up here. I think this is where I'm going to go. Get the footing. Here's what I was looking for. Look at that. So cool.
they're supposed to do that, but... Love these old, crooked, uh, gnarled is the word I'm looking for, trees. They just have so much character and I don't, I don't know what it is about them. I do like those giant, grand, mature trees as well that stretch, stretch way up into the sky, but there's something about these that seem a little more mysterious maybe, that's it. Look at this, just super narrow canyon with all of these fingers. It's been likened to Bryce National Park, but those fingers seem so much more narrow. These are much um, stubbier, thicker, that's the word. As I mentioned earlier, it's, it is a challenge to uh, go see everything and also keep my footing. Or rather, take enough time up from looking to look up and see this stuff. That's one of the advantages of having a camera. The camera doesn't have to look down. <clears throat> Definitely need to watch my footing here.
And this is the part I wasn't sure if it was carved out or not. It's got some holes that look like it might have been drilled at some point. I choose to believe it's natural, even though it's probably not. Yeah, I think that's not natural. But I don't, I don't really know, to be honest with you. If you know, please let me know in the comments. Those rocks balanced up there. They're not really balanced, I don't think. I think they're just still connected. Which, I don't know if there's a difference, but. Oh, that's a little spooky. You guys can go down and look over that. Not me. I'm standing well back from the edge. Thank you. here. I was hoping they'd walk through there. Oh, there we go. Let's see, get a sense of how high up we are. We'll be down there in a minute. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. That's right, city walks. <clears throat> oh, you made it great. You're doing great. Even though I have the right of way. Oh, yeah. you. Uh, we saw you earlier. Well, I'm filming for my YouTube channel, City Walks, and getting a little bit of it. I'm only going to do a bit. You got the new one, huh? Yeah, I'm loving it. Have a good one.
he was commenting on the camera, which is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And I got the Filmmaker bundle, which has a battery handle, extender kind of thing, and a wireless microphone. And it is a great little camera. I'm loving using it and filming it and uh, filming with it for you guys. I think we have one little more treat down here that I want to show you as well. Look at these. Here's some old tall trees that haven't had to fight the wind. One of the challenges these plants have is that the rhyolite soil is not very nutritious for them. It's not, well, it's very difficult to grow. Uh, and these plants have obviously uh, specialized, I guess is the word maybe, or just found the little niches where they can thrive. Looks like they had some burn come through here. Not sure when that was. Look at this gnarled old trunk, burned out. Hard to imagine an animal hasn't made that its home yet. Maybe it's too close to the trail or the pathway with all the people. In the visitor center this morning, a lady was saying she had seen some six coatamundi at, um, down by the campground. I think it was by the campground by the river right around dark time. As if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know I've tried to take up the mandolin. And this week we spent at a guest ranch called Elkhorn, and they have a music week. They actually have a couple of music weeks. And one of the participants, one of the guests, um, played a lovely rendition of um, Tennessee Waltz. And now I've got that. I've had that. Um, melody going through my head for the last few days. It's kind of nice. It's a good, good tune to walk to. flying across our view. I think that's what that is. It's a, looks like a bluebird, but bigger. Cross between a bluebird and a jay. 
Here we go. Even though we're in the desert here, they've got some running water. There's a jay over there in that bush. And it's frozen and broken up. And, uh, but I don't know, it's just kind of a neat thing. And then I guess it's a, uh, it flows underground here and it must if it's flowing and um, emerges somewhere else, I suppose. Kind of a grassy area in there. And this is one of the reasons the Apache liked this area because it had some water, collected water, and they could use that to, one, it supported the animals that they hunted, and I don't know, I think they grew some crops, not a lot, and, um, or some groups of the Apache did. And, you know, obviously they need water for themselves too. Okay, 42 minutes, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, if we went around here this way, it would get out, you get a view down the valley, but, the cool rock feature, up close rock features are on this side. And then it sort of makes its way up. A couple other trails come in or lead off your perspective. Um, one of which is the Ed Riggs, and that's the one you take back up to the parking lot. But I'm just gonna walk back up this way. Thank you so much for joining me. Keep an eye out on this channel for more walks. We're gonna do some other ones uh, as we continue on our road trip here uh, through Arizona. And I hope you'll join us for those. Until then, keep on stepping.